he was a huge practical joker. I was seeing him with lampshades on his head and everything else. And he had a contest in church one time for who could memorize the most Bible verses. And the loser had to have his tie cut off. And so everybody gets up there and Daddy deliberately lost so that he could, everybody could watch him take this great old big huge scissors and get his tie cut off. Spinning that Bible backwards, forwards, and inside out, and upside down. But That's awesome. He told his brother one time, his brother was going to have to take, he was going to have to take Carl and Chuck. And so, Daddy was a perfect straight man. He says, Marvel, what are you going to do? Those things are going to make you grow breast and everything just like a woman. <laughs> my father called my mother, Daddy, what am I going to do? Joe says those shots are going to turn me into a woman. She's Carl, you idiot. They're going to give you male hormone shots, not female <laughs> hormone shots. <laughs> It's a wonder we survived. We had duck holes and put each other in them with pipes to breathe through. <laughs> we snuck off when we were, what, 10 or 11 to go to the movies about three miles from the house. And I got caught in the railroad track. My shoe got caught in the railroad mm. track. And I was trying to go home without my shoes. And I was not going to get here. Here's this train coming down there. And here's my brother's trying to get me out, get my shoe out of the cotton picking railroad track. And I was not going to leave without those shoes. And just as the railroad, the train got there, they yanked me out of the shoe and left the shoe there. And I had to go home and tell Mom why I didn't have shoes. <laughs> and if you were going to fight with them, you were going to fight with me. I came home with my skirts torn off at the waist and black eyes and bloody noses and everything else. Because if you're going to get in the middle of my brothers, you're going to get in the middle of me. And there was this guy, his, his sister's his name was Mary Armstrong, but I can't remember him, his name. And they lived on the street in front of us. And there was a Catholic school in front of us, our house. And he came over there with a bullhook back and got after my brothers one time. Whoa. And I mean, on his back I went and I had my eyes, my hand over his eyes. And, and he was swirling around and they about beat me to death trying to hit him. <laughs> And we, we might kill each other, but you didn't bother one of us. And we all slept in the same bedroom in this little house we had. Wow. And the boys had not bed. And so Johnny and I got in a fight, and we were on top of the bunk beds. And Eddie came and got in the middle of it and pushed Johnny off the bunk bed. And I pushed Je Eddie off the bunk bed because he wasn't supposed to get in the middle of my fight. <laughs> and there were concrete floors down there. And then we, we, when we lived in Lubbock, we lived next to the bullpens where they kept the bulls for the rodeo. Mm, okay. And we got there, and one of us would get in front of those bulls, <laughs> and I would get behind us, and we'd dare them to chase us until John got bored in the foot, and we didn't do that anymore. Oh, man. Then when we lived in Odessa, we had this neighbor that was a real crab, and we were out, we were, what, five, six years old, and we were out, we were out trying to sing the backyard out, and we were piling all this stuff against the fence. And he came out and accused us of getting ready to set the fence on fire and called the police. So my Aunt Jane and my mom and Cheryl and all the kids were over there. So they put us in the car and, and we were we were going to leave before the police got there. But Eddie and I went out there and set the, got the big fence on fire because if we were going to be accused of setting it on fire, we were going to set it on fire. And we, <laughs> we went across the railroad tracks one way and the police came across the railroad track the other and Airedale was in the floorboards with these butts sticking in the air shaking <laughs> like <laughs> And then they, it was like Charlie Brown and Lucy and the football. I'm afraid of heights. Come on, Mary. We'll help you out of the tree. Come on. Come on. We'll do it. We'll do it. No, you won't. You'll leave me. No, come on. We'll let you out of the tree. Well, then they go off and leave me up there. And we had a, this big old tree that came over this detached garage when we lived in Odessa. And I decided one time, by God, they weren't going to leave me in that tree. I was going to jump out. Of course, we couldn't cut my hair, so my hair was down in my rear. And I jumped out of that tree and got caught by the hair of my head. And my mom's up there on the top of that garage roof, untangling me from that tree one strand at a time with it pulling me bald headed and me screaming my mm -hmm. mind back. Oh, man. Because then me, I'd cut the kid's hair, but, you know, daddy wouldn't have had that, so. Wow.
That's crazy. Instead of time, your pants fell off. Oh, Lord. We lived 10 miles from where we went to high school, which I'm not. And we had the whole football, baseball, any kind of team you had was in that class, and we had three girls. And the last class of every day, two people were allowed to go get a case of pot and bring it into the class. So this girl named Phyllis Cook and I went to get the pot one day. And just as I walked, stepped over the threshold of the classroom, the elastic on my panties broke, and down they came. Oh, my goodness. Well, what are you going to do? So I said, Michelle, can I go to the bathroom, and do you have a baby pants? And to this day, if I run into any of those kids, it's, hey, you having trouble keeping your pants up, Marta? <laughs> One of my most embarrassing times, but him ran the wrong way on the football field, made a touchdown <laughs> for the other team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So our cousin yeah. Arnold Jr., when they started to play again, and he starts going the wrong way again. So Arnold Jr. pulls his pants completely off of him on the full football field, trying to keep him from making a, a touchdown for the other team. And then oh, when man. he was wrestling, he forgot to put his athletic supporter on. So this old guy was turning him every way, but telling him everything he had was about to know. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, he was saved. Don't stop can't do that. He said, his thing's hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> That's hilarious. So you wrestle and play football, and... Well, he wrestled at it and he said, Well, I have to get a We were all in the same classes together. And nobody knew we weren't real brothers and sisters until we were in high school. Wow. And we had the same history class. And Mr. Bell said, Eddie, hey, I gotta talk to you. We can't keep having your sister make higher grades than you do. And he looked at and said, Well, she's older than I am. And I said, Yeah, but this six months. So, of course, that made everybody wonder what in the world. They all thought we were triplets because I was six months older than Eddie and 13 months older than John and John. Uh, but I was the eldest, so they had to respect their elders. Yeah. A lot of ways I was their mother, wasn't I? Okay. okay.